Hello. Today's video is going to be quite different um, because we're doing a Q&A. So I made a funnel cake with strawberry glaze and strawberries and whipped cream. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of you for supporting my channel. I cannot believe that we are at over 2000 subscribers. That is absolutely crazy to me. So thank you all so much for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing the videos. It means so much to me. You just, you have no idea how much that really means to me. So thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to get into this food. Oh, I have some tea and lemonade today. So let me go ahead and pour that and then we'll get into the food and then into the questions. not to drop it. That's really good. That's my first time making a funnel cake. That turned out pretty good. So let's get into the questions. I went ahead and I gathered them all up and I kind of broke them up into parts. So I'll try to um, maybe kind of do like chapters or something in the video. So if you guys want to skip around, if you're not interested in like the personal stuff or whatever, you can just kind of skip over it. Um, but anyway, I've got personal questions. I have questions about Ari and then I have a whole bunch of food questions. So we'll get started with the personal ones first. So. Sorry, I can't really see and I don't have my glasses on because it gets a really bad glare. So I'm gonna have to get kind of close to these to read them. Um, but the first one is, how old are you? I am 35. Do I have a significant other? Am I married? Do I have kids? I do have a significant other. We are not married, but we may as well be because we've been together since we were teenagers. <laughs> so we've been together for a very, very long time. We do not have kids, but we do have a lot of fur kids. <laughs> so we have four dogs right now, a cat and two rabbits. 
Um, am I close with my family? I live in a completely different state from my family. Um, I am close with my grandma. I do talk to her very regularly. And I talk to my sister a whole lot more now than I used to. So we're kind of close. Um, hi, if you're watching, she told me she was going to watch this video. So hi, I won't say her name for privacy, but um, what? Oh, sorry. Let's see. What is my job slash career? This is kind of a hard one to answer because um, right now I don't really have one. Um, I'll give you some history on me though. So growing up, I always wanted to be a veterinarian or get into the performing arts some way, either through singing or dancing. When I graduated high school, there really wasn't a vet tech program close by and I also couldn't afford to go to veterinary school. So I ended up going into respiratory therapy. Um, there's a very personal reason behind that. Uh, my boyfriend does have some medical conditions, so I thought that going into that career would help me understand it more. It would help me to help him more. Um, but I quickly realized that that just wasn't for me. Um, I kind of knew in school that I didn't really belong in that field, but I was really worried about disappointing the people that were rooting for me, so I stuck with it. And once I graduated and I started working in a hospital, it wasn't long before it really started to take a toll on my mental health. So I left that career and I started working at an animal shelter. So I got really big into rescue. Um, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, I worked with dogs, cats, puppies, kittens. Um, we had different departments. So I worked in the, I think I started in the cat department or the puppy department. And anyway, I kind of moved all throughout the shelter. I worked in all the departments. I was the coordinator for one of the rescues that we worked with. So I did a whole lot of paperwork, um, making sure all of the animals saw the vet before they left, that they were um, bathed, had their ears cleaned, their nails clipped, were up to date on all their vaccines, um, had all of the health certificates that they needed in order to travel. Uh, it was a lot of work. <laughs> and then I also spent some time over the volunteer program and also helped build a foster program for the shelter because we really didn't have like a good database of fosters or a good way to track where all of our fosters were. So I went ahead and helped kind of create a program for that. And I did a lot of training with fosters, um, especially with neonatal animals, teaching people how to bottle feed, how to keep them warm and, you know, keep track of their bathroom habits and all of that stuff. Um, and eventually I became the medical coordinator for the shelter, which was kind of always my goal because I like medicine. Um, so I got to just kind of make sure everybody was healthy. If they weren't, start them on the protocols that were put in place by our overseeing veterinarian, make sure all of the animals were seen by the vet. Um, I did a lot of the intakes. So when animals would come to the shelter, we would, you know, make sure that they were vaccinated, dewormed, get, you know, as much of a medical evaluation and kind of history and all that we could. Um, and I also did a lot of work with parvo puppies. So when you're working in a shelter, you see a lot of different things. Um, they're not always good, but because of the stress of the shelter and because these animals don't have a great immune system, um, you do end up seeing a lot of parvo. So I worked in the parvo ward a lot, giving sub-Q fluids, um, you know, trying to syringe feed puppies and, um, yeah, just doing a lot of rescue stuff. And I also fostered a whole, whole lot of animals as well. And that's actually how I got most of the animals I have right now were all like foster failures. So 
after I was at the shelter for about, I think it was about six years, I ended up working in a veterinary clinic. Um, and that's what I was doing prior to the pandemic was working as a veterinary assistant. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, as I kind of mentioned previously, my boyfriend does have some medical conditions that put him in the very high risk category. Um, when you're working with the public so much, you really can't social distance. And when you're holding animals for somebody else to look at, it's a, it's a very big team effort. So you're constantly shoulder to shoulder in each other's faces at all times. And my boss called me one night and was like, hey, you know, we're starting to get cases in our area and we think it might be best if you don't work around a lot of people in order to keep your loved ones safe, which I completely agreed with. So I kind of found myself out of a job. Um, with that came a lot of feelings. I was used to working 11 to 12 hour shifts, you know, four or five days a week. Um, and now I'm just home all the time. And it kind of felt like, well, what am I supposed to do? So I kind of felt a little bit of depression there. I also felt a lot of guilt because I would see on social media where my coworkers were saying how understaffed they were. They were really overworked. I felt really guilty because I wasn't there helping them. But at the same time, I need to protect my person. And I'm really the only one that can do that. So yeah, I just, I've, I've been home this whole time. Luckily, we are very, very fortunate that we have family that has been able to help us out um, financially and with getting groceries and things like that so that we don't have to, you know, get exposed or put ourselves at risk, which I understand we are extremely f fortunate for. I know that there are so many people out there that are probably in similar situations that can't do that. And if you are one of them, I am so sorry my heart goes out to you. Um, cause it's, it's really hard. It is really hard, but that's where I am right now. I will say that I did start looking into things that I could do from home, YouTube being one of them, but I also started looking into voice acting because like I said before, I really wanted to get into entertainment at one point and I am currently narrating an audiobook that will hopefully be up on Audible soon. Um, it's it's almost done with the whole narration and editing process. So yeah, hopefully that will be out soon and hopefully maybe that can be kind of a new little career path. I don't we'll we'll see where that goes. <laughs> um so the next question is what inspired you to start YouTube? It's actually something that I've wanted to do for years. Um I really love to sing. That's something I've always kind of had in the back of my head that maybe I could do one day. Um, so I really wanted to start a YouTube channel for that, but I was always too busy or too tired or was working. And then when I was out of a job, I was like, well, I don't really have those excuses anymore. And it really dawned on me that the thing that was holding me back from starting a channel was I was scared. <laughs> I was afraid of people judging me. Um, also, singing is something that I enjoy so much that I'm afraid that if I put it out there and people are like, oh, you're terrible, like you should stop, then I won't enjoy it anymore. And it'll be like this thing that I love that I just kind of 
lose. So finally, I just told myself one day, I was like, look, if I don't do a video, if I don't put one up now, it's never going to happen. So I went ahead and we recorded a video and I put it up there and it did okay. Like I didn't get tons of terrible comments or anything. So I kept going with it. And then after a few months, I went ahead and I tried to start a vlog channel. I haven't posted on either of those channels in like a year. Um, just because I kind of lost motivation for it. I do want to get back to them. The vlog channel was kind of hard to keep up with because I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't done anything. I just kind of feel like stuck. Like I, I don't know what to post. Um, cause I'm sure people don't want to just see me watch TV. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to post on it. So I just kind of stopped. And then the music channel, I don't really know why I stopped. I think because I got busy with the audiobook and stuff. And then I don't know. I, I just lost motivation for it, I guess. But I do have some songs that I want to put out soon. So hopefully, you know, I'll get back to that. So the next question is, why did I start a mukbang slash ASMR channel? So I've always kind of been into food content. I like watching cooking shows. I like looking up recipes. And I started watching mukbang at, well, I think towards the beginning of the pandemic. I got really big into Stephanie Sue's channel because um, I was kind of into the whole true crime thing anyway. So I started watching her mukbangs where she was talking about a lot of true crime and yeah, I don't know. It, it just kind of went from there. I started watching more and I already liked ASMR and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> so I just started a channel kind of on a whim and here we are a year later. <laughs> and yes, I do enjoy it. So the next question is, what is the best part about having this channel? Um, definitely talking to you guys. I love hearing from you in the comments. But also, just giving me something to do. Um, again, it was really weird when I found myself out of a job and I kind of went through a depression of like, well, now what? Um, so having this channel has really given me kind of like a reason to get up and get out of bed and, you know, do something. Um, I kind of treat this channel like a job in a way. I'm like, all right, well, I already put the schedule out there. So I have to get up. I have to make a video. Let me go ahead and, and put this out. And it gives me like a reason to get up and do stuff. <laughs> it also gives me a reason to try a bunch of new recipes um, and not just eat frozen pizza all the time. <laughs> but, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of different recipes that I wanted to try, but I, I was just like, eh whatever. I'm lazy. I don't feel like doing it. But yeah, this channel is like giving me a reason to like try it out and be creative. And yeah, it's been fun. I like it. I like trying new things. Like I never would have made a funnel cake before this. Not because I didn't want to just like I didn't really have a reason to. So yeah, I like that part of it too. So what are my personal goals in the next five years? I hope that I'm still doing YouTube. I also hope that I am still doing voice narration. Um, hopefully I can get a few more projects for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to travel at some point. I think that would be cool if, if we can. <laughs> what is my proudest moment slash achievement? I would say probably buying my house because I didn't know if that was something I would ever be able to do. So yeah, that's probably my proudest moment. What is your most embarrassing moments? <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> um, 
No, several times I have gotten a bathroom door open on me in public. Um, so that's always a little embarrassing. Um, also, I accidentally sang Salt and Pepper's Push It to my boss when I was working at the vet clinic. <laughs> I was walking through an area and I didn't realize he was there while I was singing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, let me see the next one. Um, do I have any talents? I mean, there's some things that I'm okay at. I don't know if you'd consider it a talent. <laughs> um, I guess. I guess that would lead into my next question is, do you have any hobbies? Um, I like to sing, I like to dance, and I like to do crafts. I like to knit a lot. Um, my boyfriend's grandma taught me how to knit um, years and years and years ago. So I still do that some, so. Do you watch any TV shows? Yes, I do. Um, I'm really big into K-dramas right now. And what is my favorite genre of movie? Um, probably, probably scary movies. Um, I like comedy too, of course, because I like to laugh. But um, yeah, probably scary movies. What is my favorite vacation spot? That would be Ocracoke. I really like going to Ocracoke. Um, it's just such a nice little quiet area. I love that you can get everywhere you need to go by either walking or biking. And yeah, it's just like a nice chill place. We've taken two of our dogs there before and that was kind of fun. So. What is your dream vacation? Hmm. Probably somewhere tropical. I don't know that I have a particular destination, but yeah, just somewhere kind of warm with a beach or I would really like to go to like Japan or something and see like the blossoming cherry trees. I think that would be really pretty. How did Ari get his name? So Ari isn't actually his name. It is. It's, it's more of a nickname. So it's a shortened version of his actual name. So when I was working in the vet clinic, um, the clinic that I worked for did a lot of stuff with the animal shelter and also animal control. So we saw a lot of animals that were coming through there that needed medical treatment, spay and neuter, things like that. And prior to me meeting Ari, I had fostered this dog that had come from animal control. They thought had possibly been a bait dog due to the injuries. Um, and I really loved this dog. I really wanted to keep him, but we already had five dogs at the time and he had some injuries that were probably going to need to be seen by like a specialist and maybe need some, you know, pretty intense surgeries that we just couldn't afford. So he ended up getting adopted. Um, I'm still in contact with his adopter. She is an absolutely amazing woman and this dog could not have asked for a better home but he had left that weekend and so I was just really sad to see him go and animal control came in it was like the next day or the day after he had left and they brought in this little hairless puppy who was completely covered in scabs um it he had been astray and we found out that he had severe demodectic mange. And being the person that I am, if you know, I have one foster leave and I'm sad, I'm like, oh, I need another one. <laughs> so I saw this puppy and I was like, that's my next foster. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got him treated for the mange. I waited a week to bring him home so that he could get vaccinated and dewormed and all that because I didn't want to bring anything like that home to, to my animals. So he stayed in the clinic for a week. And during that time, I was trying to think of like a name. I wanted to give him like a really cool name. And I like names that I don't really hear of too much. So I also wanted something that like fit him. 
So I was looking around on the internet and I came across this, I think it's I'm pretty sure it's an Italian name and I'm probably going to say it wrong. So I'm sorry in advance if I'm actually saying this name wrong, but it's Baldessari. And I really liked it because um, not making fun of anybody that has this name, by the way, but when you break down the spelling of it, it looks like bald ass Ari. And being that he was hairless, <laughs> that's what I named him. And we just call him Ari for short. Um, I'll try to, you know what, I'll put in some pictures of what he looked like when he was a puppy. Um, but yeah, he, his skin cleared up and his hair came back. However, I don't know if it's his genetics or if it's because his skin was so damaged when he was little, but his fur is super thin. You can see like clear through to his skin, um, his whole belly area, like the insides of his legs have like no hair on them. And, uh, yeah, he's just, just my little hairless dog. <laughs> I got to make sure that he doesn't stay out in the sun too much because I'm worried he'll, he'll get sunburned. So, yeah. Um, my next question about him was how old is he? He just turned four in February. Now on to food questions. <laughs> um, the first one is, what is my favorite food? Let me eat this strawberry first. My favorite food is probably mm, either french fries or pizza. I could eat either one of those pretty much every day. Um, which, not the very next question, but a few down, is if I had to eat one meal for the rest of my life every day, what would it be and why? Probably french fries or pizza. <laughs> I would say french fries and pizza. Or french fries and cheeseburgers. It depends. If you can change the toppings every day, then I feel like there's enough variety that you wouldn't get bored. If you can't change the toppings every day, I would probably still say french fries and pizza. <laughs> My least favorite food. I hate celery. I hate it. I think it's disgusting, especially cooked celery. Don't give me anything with cooked celery in it. <laughs> My favorite dessert. I like pie and fruit cobblers with ice cream, especially blackberry cobbler. Um, I also like things with strawberries and whipped cream or a brownie with ice cream, hot fudge and crushed Oreos. That's really good. What is my favorite meal ever? Probably. Hmm. There was these mahi mahi fish sticks that I had at Myrtle Beach once that were really good. <laughs> and I liked that restaurant. It had like a really cool little vibe. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Riverside Cafe. Also, there was a tuna sandwich that I had at Howard's Pub on Ocracoke that was pretty good. And yeah, that one was really good. What is my favorite taco? Um. I like Taco Bell's Doritos taco um, with, you know, everything on it. I, I actually really like their cheesy gordita crunch and the chalupas, but I don't think you'd consider those tacos. <laughs> There's also a, a local restaurant that has this really good shredded chicken taco and they put this um, 
white cheese. I'm not quite sure what it is on it. Mozzarella maybe? I don't know. Um, and then sour cream, tomatoes, and lettuce. And it's delicious. What would your last meal be and why? Probably some type of fancy steak with lobster and a creamy pasta with truffles and then some type of decadent dessert. Because if it's your last meal ever, why not go all out? But then also have a pizza on the side just in case the food is disgusting. How do you come up with such a variety of foods? So, I like to consume a lot of content and call it research. <laughs> um, I like watching a lot of cooking videos. Um, I'm kind of addicted to Pinterest. And then I just, yeah, look for recipes. I also try to find recipes that I like to make and then figure out how to change them up. So, for example, I made the cheesy, the Korean cheesy potato pancakes a little while back. And I was like, oh, well, the potato dough is kind of easy to make. So what if I just made them long like fries and deep fried them? And then that's how I got my potato sticks. And then I thought, well, what if you wrapped it around string cheese like you would a Korean corn dog and roll it in panko? And then that's how I got the potato cheese sticks. And then I thought, well, what if you made a jalapeno popper feel filling and did the same thing? So that's how I also got those little logs that I made a couple videos ago. Um, so yeah, I just sometimes take a recipe and then just kind of play around with it, change up the flavors or the spices or the fillings and yeah, just cooking should be fun. Like you should just you know, make stuff up. <laughs> um, strawberry and banana juice or strawberry and pineapple? Mmm, probably strawberry and pineapple. What is one dish you haven't had slash prepared and are looking forward to the most? I would really, really love to try authentic Korean food. I've tried making the spicy rice cakes. However, I can't find the actual rice cakes. So I use um, rice paper and just kind of roll it up, which is good, but I also don't have like the fish cake that you would normally put in there. Um, so I'm sure that what I make doesn't compare to the real thing. I also would really like to try like Korean barbecue or Korean fried chicken. I don't trust myself to make it. I know I will mess it up. So yeah, probably that. Um, I think that is the end of the questions. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna go finish this. I feel weird just kind of eating it after talking so much. So <laughs> I'm gonna go. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what some of your favorite foods are. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, this is so weird and so awkward. Hello. Just say hello. 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 Hello, Ari. Hello. Why is hello so awkward?